you haven't watched it yet, check out the first in this series up here. If you're ready for the next step, let's find out what you need to know to make a picture book. Hello, it's Jules here in the second of this series about making picture books and an overview of the course that I've made, Make a Picture Book Step by Step. Last time we looked at the key decisions that you'll need to think about right from the very start of your project and, spoiler alert, it has nothing to do with the narrative of your story. Once you've got the bones of said narrative though, you'll need to think about the pacing of your story. What is it that makes a child want to hear and see the next page? What is it about your book that makes it exciting, makes it a page turner? You'll need to fine tune those skills of knowing where to break the pages so that the next page becomes a necessity. If you're working with an illustrator or designer, they may well have some good ideas on pacing, so give them a chance and mull over their suggestions. Although, if you're indie publishing, this is your book and you make the final decision. One easy way to grip your pacing by the arms is to make a dummy book. It really is a vital and very useful step. You don't have to be an artist. You can just make notes on each page for images, but do paste your words in. I work with both illustration and text in my books, and I often think about my story in picture form before the text hits the page. That means I need to roughly draw out my pages and add the words to it, often on sticky notes, so that I can edit them easily. Doing this step will also give you page design ideas and show you where there is too much or too little text. Whether you're illustrating it yourself or hiring a professional, making a dummy book means that you can make notes on what you want to see on the page. I like to think that you get double for your money when you buy a picture book. You get the narrative of the text, but you also get some backstory in the illustrations. You might have little subplots going on in the background, or your picture might be describing something that has happened directly before or directly after whatever's happening in the text. Now, what will you need for making a dummy book? In the UK, we have layout paper. I use it a lot and always for making dummy books. It's a bit like tracing paper, but not as transparent, meaning that you can lay one page over another to draw through and make adjustments really easily. It's a bit like a thin version of copier paper and I usually buy the A3 size. You'll also need a ruler, pencil, eraser, and some sticky notes. And time to sit and focus on what you're doing without being disturbed by hungry family members, human or otherwise. In thinking about your pacing, I have included a story shape checklist. If you've never heard of one of these, it's a useful tool to help you pace your story and give it rhythm. As children, we learn that a story needs a beginning, a middle and an end. And if you've ever written a story recently, then perhaps you've had a cracking great beginning to your story and the middle's quite interesting, and then you just kind of fizzle out as you get towards the end because you just can't think how to finish it. Using a story shape checklist will help solve that problem. It explains what you need for each section and helps you plan the end before you get stuck. You'll also need to figure out where exactly in your dummy book your story actually starts. When you look at a picture book, the story doesn't start on the page inside the cover. So what do you need to have? Where does the copyright or dedication information go? And what about the title page? And where should it end? What should be at the back? You'll find a really useful copyright example and template for a 32 page book showing you exactly what I have used in the past. In the next few modules of the course, I give lessons and examples on things you might need to draw if you're deciding to illustrate the book yourself. You need to consider the size of the page and the design of the page. Where will the text go? If it's on the same page as the illustration and your text is going over part of the illustration, then that, that part of the illustration needs to be uncluttered and detail free so that it's easy to read the text. How do you get your reader to focus on the part of the illustration that you want them to look at and 
What can you do about backgrounds? If you need some help with making your picture book and want to use my exact formula, then I'll leave a link in the description box below. There is a free preview to have a look at. And once you're fully enrolled, the course is yours forever to watch and rewatch as many times as you want. There are 52 lessons, including four hours of video content and lots of downloads to print off and keep. There are checklists at the end of each module and links to all of the useful websites that I talk about. These are all the key things that you need to get clear in your head before you delve too far into making your picture book. In particular, it's really important to focus on how you are going to publish your book because if you want to indie publish, then that will have a domino effect on all of the other decisions that you make along the way. If you decide to do this and it feels utterly overwhelming, I know exactly how you feel because I was there. The main thing to remember is that you don't need to learn absolutely everything now, this week. Take it step by step and soon you'll discover that you're learning things you never thought you'd learn. And when you reach your goal and have that book in your hand, you'll realize how far you've come. So check out the free preview. I'll leave the link in the description box below. I may have a sneaky sale on this month. Next time we'll be looking at the tech, how to upload, what the difference is between a printer and a print on demand service, registering your book and how to make an ebook. I will see you next time. Nanu Nanu.